Hey there, loved ones. Dana, otherwise known as Dana Spirit Butterfly here. This video is uh, to offer an energy forecast. I've been doing these for quite some time. We uh, changed the format up a little bit because I'm still figuring out how to best deliver my services in a way that's supportive and uh, connects in with my own code, my own frequency, my own sound dialogue whatever word resonates with you and yours, the listener, he or she who is ready to receive this gift of spirit through as it flows through me. And so for those of you who don't know, I'm a spirit channel, basically means that this conversation that I'm offering is not just simply coming from my own mouth, it's actually coming through the lens of an energy that is beyond myself. In this particular video, we're working with the spirit of Rose, Rose is a particular ally of mine. She's not the only energy that I channel, but she's one of my um, strongest and she's a very high frequency. So, um, and earth-based, should emphasize that. She's a high frequency that is earth-based. And um, as such, we find, we, me and spirit, my dialogue, my intelligence as it flows through me, have had this deep desire for quite some time to be an advocate of women in business, but also, womb and individuals who recognize the power of the womb and um, we're not just talking about feminist dialogues here we're actually talking about a more embodied presence of acknowledgement recognizing that we all have this gift of spirit and it comes through the fact that we're born in physical bodies um, connected through what we say two lineages we have a blood lineage one that you've been born into and you have a soul lineage one that is beyond that physical vessel and be belongs to the, the the bigger picture that you are and um, often I will say if you if you have a session with me that this is the dance the dance between the two elements of us that part of us that is a pure spirit and is surrendered and available for love and life and whatever it is that emerges and then that human dialogue very deeply human dialogue um, which creates a lot of suffering for many people um, partially because we navigate our human form through the lens of that which we've been educated by and role models that are available to us and of course our upbringing. So anyway, just bringing back to spirit, this will cover essentially the month of October. If you align with the Gregorian calendar and that's your flow, we're going to do both today. Um, we're also aligning with the moon cycle and the moon cycle, the new moon is in um, Libra, thanks spirit, is in Libra um, on the 15th of October here in Australia. It might be the day before if you're somewhere else in the world. Um, and it uh, flows, um, the, the, the full moon is in Taurus on the 29th of October and it'll um, end around the 13th of November where we have another new moon but that then it will be in Scorpio. There is also a shift of lens from the Libran energy of the solar frequency that moves into the Scorpion energy. These energies are very different. They, um, they are supposed to be different because we, as humans, as women, we actually roll through cyclic energies. Um, we are cyclic by nature. We are not actually this dominant nine to five, Monday to Friday only energy. There's also this emotional state that makes us quintessentially human. And indeed, without the emotional state, we don't feel the sense of connection and love. And I'm being reminded that the earth frequency is dialoguing with a lot of us at the moment, is inspiring a lot of us to get back to nature back to our own natures first. And a lot of this will manifest in things like digestive upsets and a sense of um, inquiry. Am I on the right path? Um, am I enough? Do I have what I need to move forwards? And these are dialogues that as a channel, as a spirit channel, as a psychic medium, as a genuine um, person who's explored and navigated these frustrating experiences myself, um, I offer services in support of any person who needs it um, and is willing to book a session for that purpose. And so if you would like to learn more about what that is, then I invite you please to have a look at my website, which is www.danaspiritbutterfly, that's D-A-N-A, spiritbutterfly.com. And you can check out more about that there. But for now, let's dive in a little bit more further with Rose. 
Um, and I just want to kind of pause there before I do and just acknowledge that if you look through my own videos, the things that I've done in the past, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a universal spirit channel, which basically means that the spirit oneness works through me in a variety of different methods. Some people, you know, they just do tarot. Some people, they just do spirit channeling. Some people, they do, you know, um, psychometry or mediumship or just psychic readings or soul readings or Akashic field channeling. Um, I'm here to educate. I'm here to support us to return back to the sacred feminine aspects of self that were once blown away from our, our cultural experience and denied. And that's not to say that I'm here to dialogue on behalf of women and to push all men into, you know, jail-like experiences so that their freedom is curtailed. No, when we talk about the sacred feminine rising and the reinvigoration of this energetic on the planet, we're actually talking about a return back to something that's safer. Um, and I use the term safe to acknowledge that when we feel safe, we feel relaxed. And when we feel relaxed, life is more available for us. We feel more inclined to follow the flow of energy. We're not in a state of tension and this punishment and reward system so much where we end up in boom and bust cycles, which are actually unhealthy and can lead to toxicity. And so I work with Rose specifically, very dedicatedly for my own personal healing as a woman, as a woman. But also because the frequency of Rose is soft, it's subtle, it's maternal, it's nurturing. And it asks me, it asks any individual who likes to sit with Rose and be with Rose to calm down and to return back to centre and to honour the self. And when we get out of all of the extraneous noise, get out of all of the fussiness of the mankind um, experiment that we've been in for so many generations. I use that term purpose in this moment. Thank you very much, just so that you know. Um, you know, the two together are really important. I emphasize that I'm absolutely not a um, person who chooses to continue this shame blame paradigm towards the masculine dominance energy. This construct has been useful for us. It's been needed. And what we have here right now is the product of a lot of design and a lot of effort and a lot of work. So the life that we live collectively, communally, it only exists because of the masculine energy. What we're talking about here is we're talking about reinvigorating the awareness of the feminine energy that is um, allowing the voicing of the sacred feminine to be to be heard. And if you have a sensitivity to women and you look back of the generations past at all of the women who get so locked up in the throat because they just simply aren't feeling safe enough to say what they want or to ask for what they need, then you'll understand and appreciate why this service is so valuable. And we all have those ancestors. And those ancestors and their legacy may be in your DNA at the moment, and it may be acting out to block your own sacred wisdom and your own sacred voice. And this is where dialoguing with the sacred feminine rising and daring to ask questions, indulging your curiosity to perceive what else might be there is in service to you. So if you'd like to learn a bit more about that, I um, offer a number of different ways to do that. You don't just have to do one-on-one -on -one session, but I also have online um, courses in psychic development because we're talking about the subtle senses that we all have because we are all psychic that we're in denial of and we actually think that it's something else and when you think that it's something else then that can't be useful for you anyway so anyway that's there if you'd like so I'm just going to merge a little bit more fully with Rose and this is my gift to you this is my gift to any person who feels like they want to stay listening um, I have no idea what's going to come through I never do but I already feel Rose coming and landing on my heart. She's very heart driven, very dedicated. She's present on all lands and all continents. Rose as a, as a frequency is not just um, a dialogue with any particular country or culture. She exists beyond us. She's very valued, very valuable. So she holds that as an energy. She has been utilized by a number of different um, energies that have caused her some grief 
because they've misunderstood what her intent is and they've suppressed her particular nature and voice. Um, I'm also reminded that a lot of roses actually aren't themselves in so much as they're often grafted. And that is a very good example of the way that we have over time cut and pasted a lot of our uh, illusions around what it is that we are and how it is that we emerge and what beauty means. And yes, we are talking about surgery. We are talking about the alterations that we make to our physical body in order to be more appeasing, a pleasing and desirable. And Spirit's asking me, sorry, Rose, thank you, I'm with Rose. Rose is asking me just to mention that she welcomes all of you in dialogue. She is not specific about who she speaks to. She loves on all things. She doesn't mind some of the misunderstandings because she cares. She cares about the origins of where that comes from. So she works really well as a legacy healer because she does understand how to sit between two aspects of a conflict and how to listen to both. She understands that both voices need to be heard, that voices are designed to be heard, otherwise we wouldn't use them. And the dialogue is deserving of being listened to always in all ways. And so she wishes just to, for now, gift you with this particular dialogue that she wishes and welcomes you in. She says hello. She knows that you all have your own attachments to Rose and all is welcome. She doesn't mind a little bit of energy directed at her in, in haste or uh, she doesn't actually mind a little bit of aggressive um, frustrating energy directed in her field because for her she knows how to cleanse it she knows how to forgive and she cares she cares more for you than you will ever know because she's a rose and you're a human <laughs> you can't talk to her like I can but I can feel her I feel her all the way to my belly and she's soothing she's also reminding me that um you know, you can eat rose petals provided they haven't been sprayed by chemicals. They're actually really high in vitamin C. And vitamin C is actually needed for us to be able to digest life. Um, vitamin C is one of the vitamins that we often um, need more of. And you cannot have too much of vitamin C or rose. <laughs> Heading forwards into this moon cycle. Rose is still with me. Heading forwards into this new moon cycle, she's saying that forgiveness is a practice that is welcome in your field. When we say practice, a practice means that you don't just jump straight to forgiveness and then make it an intellectual exercise of just saying, I forgive you. It is a sense that arrives. When you arrive at forgiveness, it is uh, off the back of a, an exploration, a journey. And so this next moon cycle, this next month, whatever it is that you're aligning with, she says that we are more connected to the earth than we may consciously acknowledge. Even if you feel anxiety and pressure to be in the mind and you're running, fulfilling your timetable, making sure that all of your ends are matching up, she is still here and your earth magic is still available to you. It just hums in the background if you're not working with it consciously. You are a part of everything. So everything that you do is impacting others, whether you know it or not. And this month is entirely true. You may notice if you have the ears to listen or the eyes to see that even if you're journeying on your own, your impact is, is impacting. Your impact is impacting. The energy that you're processing is impacting others and it will continue to do so. She says this month is going to be a bit of an introspective month, also partially because we have eclipses coming up. So the new moon, the next new moon is actually a solar eclipse and the full moon in um, Taurus on the 29th of October is, is a lunar uh, eclipse. Eclipse seasons often express things outwards but ask you to be present with what's inside and it does this deliberately because it's asking you to take better care of that which matters intrinsically to you so anything that is frustrating you at the moment that shouldn't be in your life eclipses have the power to create a dynamic which makes them leave and 
it can be a subtle exploration. You can ask Rose to step in and to help you if you'd like to align with her energy, but it also may be dramatic and drama in itself is a little bit illusory, meaning that a lot of drama is a creation of the mind and the mind is very powerful and it will drive you into uncertainty and chaos if you identify with it strongly. So our recommendation is be gentle with yourself across this moon cycle. We always say that anyway, because gentleness is a, um, an orientation. It's a perspective. When I choose to be gentle on my own experience, then I tend to step out of reactivity and into um, creating space and creating space in the space we hear differently in the space we often get answers that aren't available for us if we're in that fire pit of reactivity which unfortunately clip seasons can bring out within our psyche and our senses don't forget that your greatest power is connection to the earth through the earth and that might look like you taking your shoes off and going for a beach walk or standing in the grass or sitting at the base of a tree and breathing and so with that, we will slowly start to wrap this video up. We're also heading into um, the Celtic wheel of um, the year's celebrations of Beltane here in the Southern Hemisphere, which Beltane is, is a spring celebration. It's often where sacred union is a thing, right? Because the, um, the white stag is um, mates with the May Queen. We use the term May Queen, of course, because this dialogue actually belongs in England, but being of English descent and Rose is very much woven within the English dialogue. It's an important rite of passage in a way to acknowledge that this time of year is very much about union and reunion, seeing the masculine and feminine together and recognizing their potency and when i say that it's not always a romantic paradigm sometimes it might mean that in business you suddenly realize that the structures that you're creating are actually supporting the emotional heart of your intelligence if, of, of your business and in some ways you may take this as an opportunity to recognize how man or woman hasn't shown up in your life and of course we reserve your right as a human as a woman to to follow your own dialogue, just hold yourself accountable to your sense feeling and recognize that you too have a voice and that it is potent here. Um, in the Northern Hemisphere, you're moving into Samhain, which All Hallows, um, sorry, yeah, All Hallows Eve is, is, is one variation of that. Um, the um, Catholic Church would celebrate All Hallows Eve, which became Halloween. And so this is a time where it is believed that the veil between the spirit world and uh, and the physical plane is thinnest. Um, it's also the prelude to uh, the deeper dark winter. And so there's still a descent into darkness and still a movement into the, 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 the void, the, the parts of you that maybe are uncomfortable and don't quite feel right for you. And this is necessary. We are as agents of change, agents of change. <laughs> the human um, design is that we are omnipresently moving through a journey and that journey does in involve things that we don't like while we're heading towards the things that we desire. And this is a part and parcel of the human experience. So forgive yourself if you're having a hard time. It is it is necessary for your growth and it is necessary for you to embody more love um, and to really feel met in a deeper well in the part of you that exists beyond time. And so, yeah, I feel like that's enough for today. I feel like that's all that we're going to say. Rose sends her love. The Earth Mother, of course, desires connection with you and always will ask you to get outside more. So even if you're in a colder environment, please make sure that you find space to be outside and invite the sun's rays into your energy field, into your third eye even, to assist you to feel the light and to remember that you are a being of light and shadow so much love to all of you who are my community who choose to listen to this dialogue and subscribe to a connection with spirit um, i look forward to our next time whenever that might be so wishing you well
please forgive yourself if you're struggling with time period. You will find what you're seeking on the other side of the eclipse season. All right. Bye.